Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I thought I would chat with you guys a little bit about understanding what we mean by mechanical tension and progressive overload. And it's becoming more and more understood in the research that the primary driver of muscle growth is tension, mechanical tension. But what, what do we mean by that? You know, because when you bring that topic up, people will say, well, does that always mean weight on the bar? Well, yes, if your form, your cadence, your range of motion, the way you perform the exercise stays exactly the same, and you add weight, then mechanical tension will go up. Okay? But that's only if nothing changes. And that's one of the problems we run into with uh, the idea of progressive overload. You know, you explain to people that, look, progressive overload uh, is a critical part of gaining muscle. Why? Because it can increase the tension on the muscle. And the more tension that is placed on a muscle, uh, you know, the more growth stimulus it gets, the more fatigue we create, the more, uh, the deeper muscle fibers that we recruit. Okay? And I think most people get that concept. The problem becomes what happens when form changes. Well, that's, that's an important point. So one of the things you guys will notice there in the benching and stuff I'm doing, because when I'm benching for hypertrophy, you notice I'm using a little less weight than when you see my power benching, right? But I'm also doing a longer range of motion. We're, we're more, more flat back, no real arch. Therefore, we get a deeper stretch at the bottom. But what does that mean for tension? Well, that means with the same weight, the tension on the muscle can increase a lot. Because when we go into deeper stretched movements, the, the muscles are put in a disadvantage. Okay, they're losing the mechanical advantage that we might get from an arch. So it's not just range of motion. And that's what people don't understand when we start changing form on exercises. And the, the way that joints move uh, changes, we're not just changing range of motion. We're changing joint angles. It's kind of a big deal. It is kind of a big deal because if the joint angles change, then the tension changes even with the same weight. So when you take something like a bench, the hardest part is the bottom, right? That is the point where the pecs are put at the most disadvantage. Therefore, there's the most tension on the pectoral. So if you can find a way to add range of motion at the bottom, such as reducing the size of your arch, being more flat back, guess what? We put more direct tension on the pec without changing the weight. And it can be a significant change. It can be so much that a big arch versus going flat back, you might be able to take 50 pounds off the bar and still in some cases, extreme cases, actually put more tension on the muscle. What people also have to remember is that it's about tension on individual muscle fibers. So that's the mechanical side of it. All right, so what happens when we come over to individual muscle fibers? Well, that's a big deal. That's one reason rep work creates more total tension, right? That's the reason the rep work creates more total tension than, say, a wonder at max does. Because we're fatiguing the more intermediate fibers and the more those get fatigued, the more muscle fibers get direct tension placed upon them. Okay, so this is kind of a big deal. So let's come over, if you really think in terms of, of total tension, you need to start thinking about, can we increase reps? Can we increase weight? Can we get deeper stretches? All of these things are factors. They're all factors, and all of them can contribute to increasing tension. Because really, that, that is what we are chasing. If you are trying to maximally develop a muscle, and I'll talk about moving the most weight, because we're moving the most weight, we want the opposite. We want the muscles to place the most tension on the weight, not the other way around. In other words, we want things to be as advantage as possible. We want to get the best leverage, which means you want to take those harder parts out, and so on and so forth. You want to cut ranges of motion. You want to remove the hardest part of exercises. You want arms and legs lined up to give you the best levers. Okay, that's removing the most weight. And I'm not saying there can't be overlap, because there can be. But if our goal is to build muscle, we want as much tension as we can get on an individual muscle, 
and then we want as much tension as we can get on as many muscle fibers as possible. So the more muscle fibers that we can put higher amounts of tension on, the more muscle growth we stimulate. Because the only fibers that are going to grow are the ones that receive tension. That's the ones that are going to grow. Okay, so when we go into those disadvantaged positions, we have the potential to do that. It's also the same if you think of longer, fuller ranges of motion. So even uh, the parts of an exercise, by doing the full range of motion, not just the most disadvantaged part, we are raising that total potential, right? We're raising the potential to work the most muscle fibers possible and for those muscle fibers to have to do work. But they have to work harder in those disadvantaged positions. And where are those? So the bottom of a curl, right? The bottom of a tricep extension. Okay, bottom of a tricep extension, that's where the triceps are at the most disadvantaged. The very bottom of a bench press. And your triceps may not be put into that stretch position on a bench, even though they can get pretty good stimulus. At least one head of the triceps doesn't grow a lot. But it will on a tricep extension. The bench press, that bottom, puts the most tension on the pec. How about a squat? The deeper your knee bend. Okay, it's not about the hip. It's not about how parallel you go. Because that's hip extensors. That's glutes. It's about how deep your knee bends. So in this case, if you notice uh, the squatting I'm doing there, that is a very, very high tension form of squat directly on the quads, right? Because it's a very long range of motion on the knee. Now, that's not always what you want in a powerlifting meet, okay, because it's harder. But if you want bigger quads, makes sense. Same thing here in RDL, stretching those hamstrings. So really the way to think about it is if, if you really want to place the most potential tension on a muscle, you want to stretch a muscle. So, you know, those deep squats, it stretches the quads, a deeper bench press. A uh, dumbbell bench press can do that effectively too, if you do them through the full range of motion. Okay. You're putting a deeper stretch on the pecs. Anything that puts a muscle into a deeper stretch under load, and then we can be forced to do more work, more total work into those disadvantaged stretched out positions. The more potential we have to build muscle right? That's what we're shooting for. Because that is what will recruit the most muscle fibers. The deepest muscle fibers, the ones that are hardest to get. That is what's going to give us the most muscle growth stimulus. And that's what we should be chasing. So that's what we mean by progressive tension or progressive overload. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I'll talk to you guys next time.